Hi, Larry Alderman here, and today I'm going to be talking about strategies to make sure you don't run out of water. If you live in a rural area away from a dependable water supply, or if you have a well, you may want to protect yourself from a water disruption because running out of water is the last thing that you ever want. So today I will give you various strategies, including how to protect yourself with a hybrid water system. So let's get going. The first line of defense in making sure you don't run out of water is to obtain a water storage tank. Here are three typical tanks. These days, these tanks are made out of a wide range of materials. They come in a wide range of sizes, a wide range of materials, and a wide range of shapes. These are three typical types here made out of plastic or polypropylene. And even the smaller of these tanks you can see is 790 gallons, 3,000 liters. That's typically enough to sustain a family of four for three days, assuming that the tank is almost full when the disruption occurs. If you have a well system, this is a typical well system, you usually have a submersible pump going to a large water storage tank which then goes to a pressure tank and booster pump, which supplies the house. Now, the key thing to note here is that a water storage tank is controlled by a float switch. In other words, the float switch determines when the submersible pump goes on and off. And usually you set it so that when it's almost empty, it goes on. And when it's almost full, it goes off. But I'm going to suggest that you set your switch so that it goes on when the tank is only one-fourth empty. This way, if there's ever a water disruption, you know that your water storage tank is at least three-fourths full. In a town system, it's similar but a little different. You have the water coming in from the town, and in this case, the water storage tank is controlled by a float valve. And the float valve will always make sure that the water storage tank is full because as soon as the water goes down a little bit, the water will go on, similar to a toilet system. So with the town water, you will have this float valve and almost always a full water storage tank if there is a disruption. Either way, in the end, you're going to wind up with a water storage tank and a pressure tank with a booster pump if there is a disruption to your water. And by the way, these storage tanks don't have to look ugly. These days there are a lot of innovative new products on the market. So I'm going to take a minute out to show you some of these new products, innovative products in a slideshow. Okay, this first slide just shows another typical water tank. This one is a little bit thin and tall. This next slide, another typical water tank, nothing special here. But now we get into some interesting ones. Here's one that's just designed to look like columns, and it's designed to fit in better with this particular house so it looks nicer. Here's one that's designed to look like a fence, to fence off your property. It looks like a fence, it acts like a fence, but it's really a water storage tank. Here's a similar product that's used as a wall to cordon off a patio. Here's one that's designed to go against the wall. Here's one that kind of looks nice. It's kind of nice shape and it goes against the wall and it's pretty big. And here's one that they call a slimline water storage where it's very slim but designed to go al along a long length of wall. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so let's get back to the subject at hand. You are very concerned about always having available water. So what can go wrong and what kind of safety mechanisms can you put in place? Specifically, how can you get to that large quantity of water stored in the storage tank? Let's consider both well systems and town water. So let's look at a well system first. What if the sump pump itself fails? I'm not talking about no electricity. I'm talking about a failure of the pump itself. Well, in this case, uh, the water storage tank is still here and the Booster pump will still work, and there'll be no problem getting water into the house, and you'll have about three days 
until you run out of water in your water storage tank. What if the booster pump fails? Well, if the booster pump fails, um, pretty much the only thing you can do is get water out of the faucet. You put a faucet, you make sure there's a faucet in your storage tank and you get water in a bucket and you get water the old fashioned way. It's better than nothing. What if the electricity fails? If the electricity fails, you can make sure that you have a generator in place. Uh, that you, so that you can connect up your generator and that will power both the well, sump pump, and the booster pump. Okay, what if the town water supply fails? Well, your storage tank is still full of water and your booster pump still works and you should be able to get water and hope that the, the town water is restored within the next few days. What if your booster pump fails? Again, same thing as with the well. There's nothing much you can do except get water directly out of your water tank. If there's electricity fail, again, you can back up the electricity with a generator. But the question I have now is, is there a better solution, perhaps one that will work equally well with either a well system or town water? Well, there are two other ways, but of course, there are trade-offs. So the first method is simply to raise the storage tank above the level of the house so that the water can flow from the storage tank into your house using gravity. It's gravity feed, no pressure tank. Pressure tank be gone. Now the, the storage tank will still be controlled in the same way as before. For a well system, there'll be a float switch. For the town water, there'll be a float valve. And there's no pressure tank, which is a good thing. It's simple, it's simple which is a good thing. But of course there are problems. So what are the problems? The first problem is it's kind of expensive. It's not easy to take a big storage tank and raise it up high. Uh, you'll probably need professional help and it's going to cost money to do that. The next problem is it's kind of ugly. And here you have a problem because when you had a pressure tank on the ground there's many solutions. You could put it under the ground if you wanted to. And if it's above ground you saw that there's many innovative solutions to make it look nice, to make it look better than an ugly old tank. But if you raise it up high, it's a little bit harder to make it look nice. Actually, it's a lot harder to make it nice, look nice. Here's a picture I took of a house right near where I live. And it's an example of a homeowner trying to lift up a, uh, elevate a water storage tank up high and still have it look reasonably nice, at least not too ugly. Now, uh, you might try putting it on your house like this, but you better be careful because if you don't know what you're doing, the water tank is going to go through the house, through the roof, and kill you. And that's not a good thing. You better get a structural engineer. And uh, you might try some of these innovative products that are flat and try to lay them on the roof. But once again, you better make sure you know what you're doing or it could crash right through the roof. Um, there's another problem. And that's another big problem with this system, and that is we have a pressure problem. This is problem number three. And you have to look at how high the tank is in comparison to the faucets. So in this example, I have a pretty large water storage tank. And when it's full, the top of the water is 40 feet above the lower faucet. This is the best case scenario. And in this case, you have 40 feet of water pushing down and 40 feet of water the formula is 40 feet of water divided by 2.31 equals 17 psi 17 psi is kind of marginal it's like okay but you're not going to have a really great shower you maybe you can wash your dishes in a dishwasher maybe not maybe you can use your washing machine maybe not now it, it gets even worse in the worst case you have the, the storage tank being almost empty and you're going uh, to the to the top faucet, not the bottom faucet. And in this case, you're only getting about 15 feet of water column. And divided by 2.31, you only get about 6 psi, which you can wash your hands and a shower can dribble on you, but it's not a very satisfying solution. So the next question is, is there a way to get the pressure of a pressure tank system with the safety offered by a gravity feed system? And the answer is yes. 
a hybrid system. A hybrid system offers maximum protection against water disruption while still giving the normal desired pressure under normal circumstances. And what are the downsides? Kind of the same as for the gravity feed system alone. It's expensive and it's ugly, but it does offer maximum protection against water disruption. So, how does it work? Let's get right into it. This is a logical diagram of a hybrid system. Now, obviously it isn't drawn to scale, but it logically shows the pieces that are involved and how they work. So, under the normal circumstances, it's, it's like a regular pressure tank system. You have the large water storage tank, and the large water storage tank feeds the pump and the booster pump, which then goes into the house, pressurized water into the house, like that. But you also have a line which is coming from the storage tank, which if the booster tank breaks or, or there's no electricity, the water can go directly through this line, through here, through this pipe, bypass the pump, and go into the house. Now, there would normally be a problem if there wasn't this little invention called a check valve. And let me explain. Suppose you didn't have the check valve. What would happen is the water would come into the water pressure system here, the water tank and, and pump, and it would get pressurized, and then it would go right back up through here, up through here, and go right back into the tank. The whole system wouldn't work at all. But this check valve is like a one-way street. It allows water to go from here, from here to here, in this direction. If the pressure on this side of the pressure valve, or the check valve, is, is high, and this side is low, the water will flow this way. So uh, you'll get water. But if the pressure on this side is higher than the pressure on this side, the check valve will keep any water from flowing. So once again, let's look at how it would work in both circumstances. Assuming that the pressure tank system is working, the water would go from the storage tank to the, to the uh, pump and pressure system. It would be pressurized and go into the house like normal. The water would try to go up here but when it hit this check valve, it would stop and it could not go any further. So the system would work as you would want it to work. Now, let's say that there's a problem with the, with the booster pump. It fails. So what's going to happen initially is there's going to still be pressure in the pressure tank. And you're going to get water from the pressure tank at first for a little while. But as you use the water, the pressure in the pressure tank is going to go down and down and down until you find that the pressure from this water storage tank, which is lifted high up, is going to be greater than the pressure in this tank. And then the water is going to flow right through the check valve into your home. Of course, you're going to get a much lower pressure, but you will get water into your home. So that's how the hybrid system works. I hope you uh, enjoyed my video. And that's about all I have to say for now. Thank you.